you find this price, what you think is the right price. And now I want you to take that and I want you to reduce it by three and a half percent. So why? This has to do with the rule of expectation, which I just made up. (laughs) So every buyer, not every buyer, many of the buyers that are going to come through your property to see it when you have your first open house, they're usually very educated. They have probably seen every single house that's been on the market for the whole three months that they've been looking, okay? So they actually probably know more about that little tiny micro niche of this property in this area with this many bedrooms and this many bathrooms. They probably know at least as much as you do about that area and what the price should be. So how is your, pro- your how is your property, when they, when they come see your property, how does it compare? So let's take a restaurant example. If I, am, if I want a really great piece of steak, I apologize if you're a vegetarian. Let's say that I want a really good piece of steak or a really good piece of, let, this is even better, a really good piece of chocolate cake. And I go to one place, I, I'm looking online, who has the best chocolate cake, blah, 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 blah. And I see that one place, they're selling a slice of chocolate cake for like three seventy five, And then I look at another place and they're selling a piece of chocolate cake for twelve fifty. If I go eat that chocolate cake for twelve fifty, it is gonna be like a transformational experience because like four times the cost of the, other, of the other chocolate cake. So I'm expecting to be like literally transported away to another place. I'm expected to be like on a chocolate cloud when I try that cake that's twelve fifty, right? My expectations are so high when I eat that cake that it would be very, very difficult for the cake to even live up to that expectation. On the other hand, if I see the other one's three seventy five, I'm gonna be like, oh, three seventy five. Oh, it'll probably be fine. You know, I'm in the area. Let me try that three seventy five cake. People said it was pretty good, and I try that, and it's like I ex- I'm expecting nothing, right? If it's as good as like a a Swiss yodel, you know, what do you call those? Like if it's as good as a, one of those little yodel things, right? I'm going to be fine. My Suzy Q, one of those little hostess cakes, right? If it's as good as a hostess cake or a hostess whatever, I'm probably going to be like, no, that was pretty good. But if I take a bite of it and it's as good as like like a cake that I might pay $5 for, then I'm going to think, wow, this is so much better than I thought it was going to be. This is better than like a $5 cake, right? So this exact same thing is going to happen with your house. If I've just gone and seen every single other house on the market and yours is like $25,000 more than those, I'm expecting more. Now, it could be that those other houses got in a bidding war and they end up selling for $25,000 more and they're on par with your house. But because I didn't know that when I went to see it, I, right? I went and saw that house. It had this price. Now I come and see your house and it has this price. If I think, wow. This is the same price as the house next door, but it's got granite countertop. Oh my God, that is a complete no-brainer. I'm definitely going to put my offer in on this house that's the same or lower than the ones nearby. And it's got some extra little feature, right? It's got whatever, whatever you decided to do to make that pop. Now, if you're in a great market, you're going to get tons of offers and the price is going to get bid up anyway. So you don't have to worry that you priced it a little bit below. If it's not a great market, if it's kind of a slow market, then guess what? your property is going to sell fast and that is going to save you money in your holding costs. So either way, you're a winner. But you can only figure all this stuff out by, you know, and I refrain from saying, ask your real estate agent for help because you might think, because I'm a real estate agent, I want you to call me. But you totally can. But that's not the point. The point is that you need to know the answers to these three questions. You need to know what is your after repair value. You need to know how much the repairs are going to cost you. And then you need to know what is a good profit or safety margin for that project, for that area, for the value of the house, for whatever, right? So if it's your first time, you've got to pad that a little bit. If it's just cosmetics, okay, 30%, you're good, you're happy, you're probably going to make at least 25%. But if it's your first project, give yourself some extra buffer, you know, pad each quote by at least 10% so that you're going to end up with at the end a bigger buffer than what you anticipated. Because like I said, the last thing you want to do is have to pay somebody to buy your house. Just to recap, now you're going to take your after repair value. So let's take an example. Let's say that I, I looked around and all the other houses in the neighborhood, if they're as good as mine or, or you know, if they're at least as good as mine, then they're selling for 500000 And so I'm thinking, okay, I think when this project is finished, I'm going to be able to get about 500000 for this house. So I take 3.5% off of that. And then I take my 30% profit margin off of that. And then I subtract my repair costs. What's it going to cost me to make this house look as nice as those other ones on the street? And whatever number is left, that's what I'm going to offer to the seller to buy this property. 